Hey, it's Pete, GCI Turf. Hope you're having a good day and I want to talk to you about something right quick. In particular, mowing height for tall fescue. See, there's always been this thought that if you cut your fescue at three or even three and a half inches, you're doing something good. You're cutting it high enough or tall enough. Well, over the years, I've come to find out that's false. I bet you're saying, hey, Pete, what makes you think that? Well, what makes me think that is remember that one of these videos I just showed you where I showed my yard in that extreme drought stress? And see, that, that yard was cut at three and a half inches. I was, I was religious about cutting it at three and a half inches because that's what I'd been told. Well, after I started doing my homework and learning about the plant itself, so hey, once I saw my yard go crispy brown that time, I started training myself. I started filling myself with knowledge, uh, talking with all these big gurus about uh, different things specifically dealing with tall fescue. I learned a lot about the plant itself. And I'm gonna teach you what I learned. Now I'm gonna take you all the way back to school. All right, in your science class. And chances are you learned about three things and you've probably forgotten about them. So I'm gonna help you remember them right now. One is osmosis. What is osmosis? Well, if you can uh, imagine when it rains or when you, you run your irrigation cycle or when you put your sprinkler out in the yard and you turn it on and that water's flying through the air and it hits the ground, what happens is that water goes in the ground, right? The dirt, so the dirt soaks it up. Well, those roots to absorb that water and take that water up and send it up through the plant, that, that process is called osmosis. All right, so why is that important? Well, it leads into the next part of the, the process. It's called transpiration. What is transpiration? That is the process in which the plant, now, now we're going to specifically talk about tall fescue. The plant takes in carbon dioxide, okay? And, it, and, and through the process of photosynthesis, that's our third word, we'll talk about that in a minute. Through the process of photosynthesis, what happens is that the carbon dioxide comes in it, it, it converts that into oxygen, spits it back out. Well, during that process, that water that is taken in by the plant through osmosis, that water is evaporated out through the stomata. Now, what are stomata? These are little teeny tiny microscopic holes on the leaf blade. Now, why are they important? Well, they're, they're super duper important because they take in water as well. They take in uh, air. They take in the carbon dioxide. They take in the nutrients you put out when you do a foliar application of your nitrogen or RGS or uh, aerator, or whatever you're putting out, natural asthma, anything. Those stomata suck that stuff in and take that in. A little bit different in a than, than when we're talking about watering things in and that kind of thing, right? So now maybe some things are starting to come together for you, There's all this liquid spraying and stuff. Not only does this stuff work well when it's watered in, it also works well when the plant takes it in so that the plant can use it directly. I guess the back on track, that's a different video. We'll talk about that later. Uh, where were we? Transpiration. Uh, osmosis happens, water falls, ground soaks it up, travels up through the xylem and phloem, gets up in the plant. Carbon dioxide comes in the plant through the stomata. The stomata release that oxygen. And you know what? Oxygen is pretty important. Try going without it one day. Well, in that process, it also loses water. The water that is, the plant has taken up is also lost through the transpiration process. Okay, that's real important. Third thing, photosynthesis. Now most of you pretty much know what this is. It, ain't, it don't take a rocket scientist to know. But what happens is, you see that big thing in the sky, wherever it's at, up there? 
that sun, what happens is these, these grass blades or these leaf blades take in that sunlight. And they trans, that's a transformation that happens inside the plant that creates energy for the plant. Okay? That's how that happens. That, that's, that's the process of photosynthesis. It, the, the main process of photosynthesis is to supply energy to the plant. And, of course, a byproduct of that is we get the oxygen that we breathe. And uh, thank God he put trees and, and green meadows and all that kind of thing across the earth. Because now I don't know if we could live without all these plants, but it's kind of hard to live without oxygen, right? All right, so you take those three things, osmosis, transpiration, and photosynthesis. And we're going to do a little experiment back here. We're going to cut the grass real short, and then we're going to cut it the way I like to cut it, at, a, at a, what I consider tall for tall fescue, which is four and a half inches. And after we cut it, I'm going to get some grass blades, and I'm going to show you how this kind of relates to those three words we just talked about. So, you know, we never trust what the side of the mower says, the little setting on the side of the mower. You know what I'm talking about. Some of them go up to four and five or whatever. But look, we're going to check this mower with a ruler. And it just so happens that this particular mower is cutting, even though it says three and a half, we're about at three, that's a little bit over three and a quarter, kind of in between three and a quarter and three and a half, somewhere in that range. So you can see there are discrepancies in what your setting on the deck says and what the actual blade height is. Now keep in mind, uh, this is an Xmark commercial mower that I'm sure, without a shadow of a doubt, Xmark spent thousands of dollars in research and development the number on the side of the the mower over there the setting and the blade height are different even after all that research and development and that's not off by much but the point i'm trying to make is you can't go by what the side of that deck says well pete i've got my mower set on four and a half or five or whatever i don't care which what, what it's set on you need to physically measure with a ruler so that you know for sure how high you're cutting the grass. And those right there, that, I had those made for the Academy and they're on their website. I think they're like five bucks and we'll send you one. And that way you will know for a fact how high you're cutting your grass. All right, so here we go. We've got the test plot out here and you know, this half here is Milo, and that side over there is Academy. And, and the, the line's right about in there. You, you can see a little bit of color difference. Now, what, now what I'm going to do is throw another little test in here. This is non-irrigated, so this is going to represent a lot of yards across the country, right? And a lot of my clients' yards here locally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these three strips. You see this stripe here? this stripe here and this stripe here and I'm going to cut these three stripes throughout the entire year I'm going to cut them at three inches all right now I've got the deck set on three and a half I don't want to take this down real fast I'll cut it at three and a half today and then I'll give it a couple of days and then I'll come back out here and cut it at three and then once I get it down on three I'll maintain this strip of turf right here at three inches all summer long and so we're going to mimic what i would estimate as gosh probably 90 percent of residential mowers they simply don't cut high enough and i want to show you the difference throughout this summer of how the height of cut affects this this three inch cut versus over here and over here Heck, we may even get up around four and three quarters or so. It all depends on the summer, how hot it gets. If we get good rain and, you know, the, the turf gets the rain it needs and and it can stay going like that because, you know, we got Milo and Academy, so they're both on a good program. So the nutrients will be there, just the water will be the only thing lacking. And I'm not going to water out here simply for that reason. Uh, it's to show you how the turf handles stress 
or recovers from stress or maintains its color better simply by the height of cut. So let's get with it. I'm gonna cut this right here at three and a half and, and I'll come back in a couple of days and I'll cut it down to three and we'll, we'll keep this on three and throughout the whole year, the whole summer, you're gonna watch this strip of grass right here and you'll be able to see the difference. All right, so there we go. <laughs> I bet you wonder, say, hey, Pete, why didn't you do your your yard around the house like that? Uh, yeah, oh, you lost your mind? You think I'm gonna cut my grass that short at three and a half? No way. Let's look at this closer. All right. Let me get down in here and get some blades of grass. To, I wanna show you to make my point here. There's a couple of good ones. Now let's go over here on the long part. Find some over here that will work. Okay, so I pulled out some samples right here of the, the actual leaf blade itself. This is the, you know, the part you see out in the yard is green and pretty. And this came from where I just mowed at the three and a half inch mark. This is kind of what's left after the collar of the plant and then over here is what's left when I'm when I do my normal cutting height so you kind of get an idea of the difference here now now how does this relate to photosynthesis and transpiration and those kind of things that we talked about earlier well this grass blade right here can capture more sunlight okay follow me with this on this it can capture more sunlight because there's more surface area for it to capture sunlight with, okay? Therefore, photosynthesis happens, uh, I don't know if you would call it better, more, or faster, it's just more of it that happens. Therefore, it can create a little more energy for the plant to survive. Same thing with transpiration. You know, we talked about transpiration in osmosis where that, uh, where the, the dirt takes, uh, the root system takes up the water and disperses it through the plant, uh, through the xylem and phloem, and, and then once that happens, it stores that water inside the plant. So, so this is, you can look at this as kind of like a gas tank on your car, in a way, or on your pickup truck. And if you go to the store and you put a half a tank of gas in it, you're not going to go as far as if you filled it up and put a full tank of gas in it. Well, there's no difference right here with your turf, with tall fescue that is. You know, this, this plant over here that's cut at three and a half, he's, done, he's not going to have as much storage as this plant over here that's cut at four and a half or four and a quarter or even four. That half inch makes a big difference. When we're talking about getting into the heat of summer, things are cooking up, the, water, the rains are slowing down or they're, or they're even stopping, you want as much storage of all this energy and water as you can possibly get in that leaf blade. That's, that's one of the things I learned over the past five years. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm self-taught. I had to teach, I was the guy who thought three and a half inches, that's tall for tall fescue, or three inches, man, I'm cutting it really high. I'm, I'm really getting the mower deck on up there. Well, I couldn't have been so wrong. I was so wrong until I made myself start raising that mower deck up and I started seeing drastic changes in my non-irrigated fescue. Well, Pete, when do I start cutting high? Well, you should have started yesterday if you got tall fescue, that is. Well, why is that? Well, the turf's growing pretty vigorously right now. At least mine is. I'm cutting it about every three days to stay on top of it. And if I waited until June or July to when the turf slows down, I'm not gonna allow that canopy to grow up, if that makes any sense. I'm gonna start early in the season, proactive, right? And I'm gonna cut that turf high in the springtime to give it, give the whole 
the whole area time to really get thick and really get dense before the summertime hits. Now, if I waited, if I was cutting my grass at three and a half, and then I waited until, say, middle of July, well, see, I'm not getting a lot of growth. It's not growing all that fast because it's hot, and that's what it's supposed to do. It's, it's natural for it to slow down when it gets hot. So I'm gonna get it up high now while I have the opportunity to do so. Because if you wait too late, that opportunity will be gone. Hey, something else I bet you didn't think about. How does cutting your turf high, or at four and a half, five inches, how does that affect the ground holding moisture? Well, it affects it in a serious kind of way. Because that big ball of goodness up there is what dries the soil out that along with wind. And if you have a taller turf, you shade the ground from some of those effects. Therefore, it holds moisture longer and it holds it better. Boy, the sun's in our favor today. So hey, I know you don't wanna hear this. And I know you're going to ask me, well, Pete, my mower won't cut but so high. Well, I know you don't want to hear it. Go buy another mower. Y'all been good to me. I appreciate that. I'm watching that subscriber list go up. And I, I told you what I was going to do. And I, I, I keep my word. I honor that. I said every time we hit 1,000 subscribers, I was going to give away something. Okay, so I got three. The last one was at 5,000, I believe. So I got 6,000, 7,000, and 8,000. So I got three natural adjuvant packages I'm gonna send out. Now when this video's over, the screen's gonna go black. And then I'm gonna have the name of the winners on the screen, okay? Now what I want you to do is those three people, you need to message me through YouTube and you send me you know, who you are and all that and send me your address and I'll send them to you. I'll stick them in the mail and they'll be on their way. Hey, thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you'll start cutting your fescue a little higher, okay? Now, if you like this kind of stuff, you can subscribe and share it with your buddies and all that kind of thing. Because we're gonna, I'm gonna show you something with this test plot this year, okay? This test plot's out here for a reason. It's to do tests on. And I'm gonna show you firsthand through these videos exactly what can happen with a tall fescue yard without irrigation.